What is going on with YouTube? It's your boy KMac here, coming back at you with another one of those cartoon conspiracy theories that you guys seem to love so much. And um, the last video, you guys left a lot of comments asking for the Phineas and Ferb, or I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I don't watch this cartoon, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I've never actually seen an episode of it. But you guys asked for the Phineas and Ferb, or however the hell you pronounce that. So... We're going to do Phoenix and Ferb. Um, like I said, I've never really seen this cartoon. It's a newer cartoon. I'm kind of old for this kind of cartoon. And I never was really a Disney per Channel person. Um, I always watched Cartoon Network and I always watched Nickelodeon. I was never really into Disney Channel. Uh, Disney Channel cartoons always just seem really childish and not really funny to me. I don't know. I don't know why, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people are really liking this show. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, the events taking place in the show are apparently all delusions of a group of kids in a children's psychiatric facility. So all of the main characters of the show, Phineas and Ferb, and I'm sure there's other characters, are all some kind of mental health patient of some sort. They all have some kind of something wrong with them in their head. Uh, that's why their parents never see anything and why it's so easy to do pretty much whatever they want in that world. But in reality... Uh, Phineas and Ferb's inventions are made of toys. The reasons nobody gets hurt on anything is because the toys themselves, because they're in the psychiatric ward, are childproof, and so they're like hard to hurt anybody with. They're made of you know soft materials. There's no uh, sharp edges. There's no corners. They make it really, really hard to hurt someone with these toys. That's why no one ever gets hurt. Also, the reason that these toys disappear every day at the end of every episode or the end of whatever at the same time is because they have a certain amount of time to play with these toys before they're taken away. And um, basically all of the people that are in charge take the toys away, put them back in their rooms where there's no more toys. So that's why they only have these toys for a certain amount of time per day. Now, uh, the reason the parents go away so often is because parents um, obviously don't live at this facility with the children themselves. They are only coming to visit, and they only come to visit, you know, maybe once or twice um, a week, sometimes more. And they're not allowed to be with the children all day, and, uh, you know, basically they're not allowed to be with their children at all times just because they are in the psychiatric ward, and, you know, obviously they can't be with them at all times. Now, the next part of this theory starts breaking down some of the characters. He starts off with Phineas. Uh, if he says that he's a schizophrenic and is detached from reality, he's so happy all the time because of the mood stabilizers, the pills they give him. The, you know, he's, they give him all these mellow pills. They mellow him out just because he was suicidal and, and depressed. So they give him all these pills and drugs and what have you to mellow him out, and that's why he's always so happy. And uh, it really makes it makes good sense. I mean, those pills would really mellow like a child out. Like it would be really weird. Uh, effects on him and also says that Ferb is um, a non-verbal acoustic which means he doesn't talk obviously whose social withdrawal got so bad that he couldn't go to normal schools because he would have a meltdown if he did he inexplicably became attached to Phineas uh, in their world Ferb chooses not to speak but can still maintain healthy relationships as he was unable to in real life his kinship with Phineas it might be the reason that they're brothers without actually being related. I don't know. But uh, moving on, we have Isabella, who is a psychotic. Um, she's just got some kind of mental disease. Doesn't really say she's just a uh, psycho. Some big word. I don't know. Some big word saying that she is psychotic. Um, basically caused by abuse from her father, which is why he's never seen in any of the episodes or any of the show at all. Because he's probably in jail or... Something along those lines because of um, causing his daughter to be a schizophrenic from the abuse that he did. Um, it's also a reason why her mother is so friendly and overly compensate for her inability to protect her when she was younger. She feels terrible about this and uh, she realizes that her basically ruined her daughter's life. And uh, she can't really come to grips with it. So she, in a way, has gone crazy herself, I guess you could say. And that she's just trying to be overprotective and obsessive and with her daughter. And um, also has an obsession with Phineas and Ferb also. So um, I don't know really too much to make about that. Next up is Candace has multiple personalities including Perry. Which is why she said Perry is so deeply connected. And why Perry existed in Candace's dream. This is why her mood cycles so much. Jeremy, Stacy, and Jenny are 
all her personalities, which is why Stacy was her, quote, eyes and ears and mouth. And put that put her away. I don't know what that means, but um, it might mean something to you. And it's also why she acts differently when they're around. The other children recognize Candace's personalities as different people as well as treat them as such. So uh, Candace's mom with her frustration mom's frustration with her busting these kids isn't even about busting it's but instead about giving her Phoenix's delusions and being so aggressive to her counselors um, next up uh, is Buford he has bipolar disorder which is why he goes from deep and sensitive to aggressive and spiteful like a drop of a hat very typical uh, behavior of someone with bipolar disorder and they get these awful mood swings at the drop of a hat and um, you know, it just could be the happiest go lucky person at one time and then the biggest bitch you've ever seen the next. Uh, next up is Belgeet, or however you pronounce that we name, I have no idea. This says here simply that he has OCD, he has a com obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, doesn't really say too much about that, but that's probably why he's always cleaning shit and whatever. Uh, next up, Dr. Doofensmertz. Man, they have weird character names in this show. Uh, is a doctor at the facility. While not a bad person, he is unliked severely by Candace. <clears throat> when she's in Perry's personality, she's more prone to break rules, which is why Doof traps her so often and why he only fights her if she attacks first. Next up is Carl, who is an orphan who had nowhere else to go. He got really involved with this because, um, I don't know, he's just in an orphanage and didn't really have else to go, so they kind of just stuck him in here. Um, while still in reality, which is why he is so reluctant to play along. He's not. He's he's never really down to play with the other children. He's not. Um, he's not really uh, messed up in the head as the other ones, which would explain him not wanting to take part in their like weird games and stuff that they're always playing. He's just kind of alienated by them and doesn't really want to hang out with them. But um, moving on from that, uh, next up is Django, who was depressed, but after connecting with the boys. He has checked out by his dad, although he relapsed once. So um, I guess he was just in there because he was depressed. He must not be in the series a whole lot. I don't really know a whole lot about this series. But uh, basically, this, series is, there's, this theory wraps up in saying that the reoccurring background characters are random doctors, visitors, social workers, and other patients. Uh, the did you think that was just going to fall out of the sky couple are the parents of the patient who are always fighting about their kid's illness. And the father's usually right. The extras from the first episode were kids who were almost done with treatment and were checked out soon after. So they were <clears throat> they were done with treatment, and that's why they're not in the series anymore. This also explains why it's perpetually summer, why the kids always wear the same clothes, why nobody goes to school, and why none of the adults ever see what their children do. So uh, that's pretty much it for this theory. I know it wasn't the best theory, and I know I didn't really explain it the best. But uh, I, I've never seen, like I said, I've never really seen this show. I don't think I've ever seen a single episode of it. So it's really hard for me to get a theory or get in depth into a theory um, that I've never seen. So I don't know. I did the best that I could, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. But if you guys could go ahead and leave a comment on this video telling me what cartoon conspiracy you guys want to see next. And, um, you know, just leave a comment like that. And drop a like if you like the video and subscribe if you're new. But that's it, guys. Gain the fuck on. Until next time, peace. Out. Like I said, if you guys are new around here, you guys can feel free to subscribe to get all of these videos in your sub box. I do this series weekly around Thursday, Friday, if not Saturday. I also do a bunch of other series, like other conspiracy theories, and I have a couple new things coming out. So be looking forward to that and gain the fuck on. Until next time, peace out.